This is Colin McGuigan for IFL TV. Delighted to be joined. This, this is this is my this yeah. is the work experience boy turning yeah. into the actual. Nah, I'm alright. I'm fine. I'm gonna go to Frank first. Frank, is this the biggest fight week you've ever been involved in in the past say 20 years in the UK? It's a massive fight week for obvious reasons. Two British fighters, two exciting big punching heavyweights. Probably the two biggest punching heavyweights in the division. Um, both on a roll at the moment, and this is. Uh, what we've all been waiting for. And obviously we've got the flavour between us two, the match room in Queensbury. So it's, uh, you know, this is, well, it ticks every box. And it's, as it's getting closer, I'm getting, I actually am getting more and more excited about the fight. I'm look, so much looking forward to it because so many people have got different opinions about it. Eddie, you've just done a feature on the Mail Online with Charlotte there, and I believe it, it went down like a lead balloon in Frank's, uh, <laughs> Frank's photo of you. Just talk to me a little bit about that painting. Yeah, no, it was... Um me and Frank had to do a portrait of each other, obviously. And um, Frank, you know, I've noticed, as I've got to know Frank, he's a very um, distinguished. I mean, like, he obviously likes his wine. I could imagine him strolling around, you know, in the gaff. <laughs> with the, with, but he's, you know what he is? It's actually very different to me. I'm a messy bastard. He's like Mr. I don't know. Don't know about the OCD, but very, very... Look, at look, you know, and I can imagine at home. And, like, when he sat down, he was asking about the acrylic canvas and the oil painting. I reckon he's got all the gear at home. I can actually imagine him looking out over to the many acres, you know, and just having a little draw of the countryside and stuff like that, you know. So he's a... I mean, it wasn't the best, is, but it was a lot better than mine that resembled the efforts of a three-year-old. What did you make of that, Frank? I thought you got it dead right. A dead right set for the tears. <laughs> Frank, I want to ask you some comments that he made during the week where he said that Daniel Dubois is not a legitimate world champion. What do you make of those comments? Well, he hasn't won the world title in the ring, but, what he, but he is the legitimate champion because he, the IBF have made him that. But what he did, he beat the guy who was the mandatory for two years, which everybody avoided, everybody avoided and beat him in style. And as a result of that, he was then became the... Uh, interim champion and obviously because of the rules of the IBF that they don't recognise rematches so the rematch between Tyson and Usyk was going ahead and the uh, IBF said you either vacate or they will or defend against uh, Daniel or um, we'll strip you. By so the way, you love to wind up, I never said he is not a legitimate world champion. What was the word? That you what I said was is for me, this is his world championship fight because I don't believe you should be elevated from interim to full champion. And if you are, you know, like if he, if he would have beaten Hergovic for the vacant title, even if the title was vacant, no problem. I see him as a world champion. And the win was good enough to be a world champion, by the way. But I just don't like the elevation. For me, this is, if he beats AJ on Saturday, oh, he's more than a legitimate world champion. And I like this... I th in my head, this is a vacant championship. But actually, I like the fact that it's not. Because when AJ wins, he would have dethroned the champion every time to win the belt. And, and that's important. And I, he has actually got the challenger's mentality going into this fight. I think Daniel, deep down, knows this is the real world championship fight. Eddie, there's been a lot said about the sparring stories. Frank's came out and said that Dubois dropped AJ in those spars. You've kind of went against that. What actually did happen between both of you? What actually did happen well, in that spar? I mean, I, I can't speak for Frank, but in my opinion, neither of us know because neither of us were there. Right. But, you know, Fowler came out in the week and said, I was there. He was rocked. Then they carried on the spar. One thing we do know is the spar carried on. And knowing Rob McCracken, if AJ got dropped, the spar wouldn't carry on. But who knows? You know, when I first heard the story... He was stretched out of the ring. Then I heard he was rocked and they carried on. You know, a lot of people I trust say that he was just buzzed. Some people that Frank trusts say that he was dropped. We'll never know. But, you know, how that affects Saturday, we'll see. Frank, there were some comments today from Joe Gallagher on TalkSport where he said that if AJ were to beat Daniel Dubois, it would be the first time he's faced a live opponent. I'll go to you first, and then I'll ask Eddie his comments on that. What do you think of those comments from Joe Gallagher? Well, I think he's the toughest opponent he's fought since he's fought Usyk, that's for sure. Um, I think he's a better fighter than all the guys since Usyk. But Usyk's the best, obviously. He's beaten both of them. He's got, he's got their names on his resume, and they're all, they're all Ws against them. 
But uh, I, I genuinely do, as I just said, I think he's the best and he'd be the toughest opponent he's had since then. So Joe was saying that AJ's never beat a live opponent. Is that what? He, he said he has, he's never beat a live opponent. If he beat Daniel Dubois, it would so, be the first time he's defeated so a live opponent. Dillian White, when he faced him, wasn't a live opponent. Vladimir Klitschko, when AJ Folk fought him, with, what, 17 wins, wasn't a live opponent. Alexander Povetkin wasn't a live opponent. I mean, Andy Ruiz coming off the rematch after he just stopped him wasn't a live opponent. I mean, Francis Ngannou, who gave Tyson Fury fits and dropped him, wasn't a live opponent. I mean, listen, very rarely Joe says anything that's incorrect, but he's definitely got that one wrong. I want to ask you both another question here. You've both kind of got to the well, point I now where, that, where, yeah, Can't no, no, real, get, put people in it and stir some shit. No, I'm actually not. And this is you know. th this question's just a little bit more about your relationship. So you two have got to the point now where you seem friendly. You seem as if you maybe go for a beer together, glass of wine. But there's an added element this week because we've got the new kid on the block and Ben Shalom, who's here this week. How is it bringing I, someone else in I, well, into this relationship firstly, that you've got? We don't bring what anyone in. In terms of... You, 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 have you got a picture of Ben Shalom in your bedroom? You seem to be half obsessed. <coughs> no, but I'm asking you a question from a fan's perspective, well, right? Ask well, to ask you, I've got to understand the question. What do you mean into the relationship? Well, you, you, you and Eddie have now formed a relationship together through this, well, we through Riyadh right? season, yeah. So the working relationship that you two have, yeah. there's now an, another promoter who's been added to the mix in Ben Shalom. How is that dynamic for you both? Just been added. He had, he had the Coley fought. When did he fight on the show? Jared Anderson. And Jared before Anderson that had as a well. couple of fights on the show. That's, mm. that's not, I think new. Do you find it different working with another guy? Because obviously we're you two not, never spoke for so many years. We're not we're working got, with. He's got a couple of like, fighters that are fighting on the bill. Like PBC, like Top Rank, like Dimitri Salita, like everybody's. Got, yeah. but, but you've had fighters. I've had fighters fight before Saudi. Ben, uh, ben Shalom's fighters fight on, on our card. It's not nothing unusual. We've done that in the past. Ultimately, we're not working together necessarily with these other promoters on the card. We're all working on the card. When you work together with someone, you're sitting down with them, you're making fights, you're planning the future strategically. You're doing 5v5s, you're doing all of this. And you want to sit down and have a glass of wine together? Yeah. Would, would, would you look at doing a 5v5 with Boxer? I'll ask you first, Frank. Is that something that maybe down the line in, in Riyadh season would be an opportunity? Has he got five? I'll ask you that you're, question. Has he got five? I mean, you're, you're the guy asking the question. I mean, you're, has he got five fighters that, that merit being in a 5v5? What about you, Eddie? Do you think he has? No. He, I, I'm not interested in doing a 5v5 because he doesn't want to put them in. You know, we had it well, on... We well, don't. He pulls them out of purse, off, yeah, purse bids all the time. So. But we, we had the situation the other night where I don't... Listen... I don't, it's like when you interview me and him, it's a little bit like a pound for pound great fighting a Hungarian journeyman. Do you know what I mean? It's not fair. So you've got to stop doing it. But when I put it on him about Dalton Smith and Adam Azim, he wouldn't even agree that fight. He wouldn't agree Beatrice Ferreira against Caroline Dubois. He won't agree uh, Billum Smith against Opatire because the day you want to swerve that. What fights can we make? When we sit down in the room the other night, you should see the lineups we're talking about. We want to roll the dice for our guys in umber. We don't. We're not scared of our broadcaster losing a fighter or getting beat. We just want to give the fans the best fights. So you can say in the interviews, "Yeah, we'll do that. We'll do that." You should do your job and say, "Will Eddie asked you the other day? Can you confirm that Adam Azim will fight Dalton Smith next?" One. Can you confirm that Caroline Dubois will fight Beatrice Ferreira next? Can you, and go through them. And if he says yes to all of them, I'll snap his hand off to do a 5v5. But the difference is talking about it and doing it. And, and you know, it's just not going to happen because it's clout chasing. But when it comes down to it, you know, they're, they're, not, they're not really players in making those kind of fights. Last one from me, Frank, because uh, I know we're pushed for time, but we haven't got to speak to you this week. The IBF situation with Kikachi Warrington, what, what is the situation there? And were you disappointed? Well, they won't, they won't uh, sanction a fight because that's their rules and regulations. And that's what it is. You know, we, they, they, it works sometimes for you and it works against you other times. And uh, they're, they're their rules. And like I say to everybody, you want to fight for a governing body's title, then you know you should read the rules and know what the situa situation is. 
and what their rules are. Number one, if you're coming off a loss, you can't fight for the title. And number two is that, um, and he's coming off of a loss, uh, Josh, which is unfortunate. And not ranked. And not ranked. And then the other thing is is uh, is the thing that they don't recognise rematches. So that's it. Would you and Eddie speak about that mandatory after this if Kakati does come through Warrington? Or will you look at maybe Kakati we're, Pickett? We're, we're, we're in the business making fights together. I mean, the one thing out of Riyadh season that's happened is that we are interested in making fights. And like we keep saying, it's not the end of the world for the guy who loses because they'll come back. If they're good enough, they'll come back. And it also makes us more more competitive. And but that right. extends outside of 5v5s as well. Of course it does. I mean, they've got Liam Davis against our guy, Shabazz Massoud, coming up. Brilliant fight. It's a cracker. Brilliant fight. fight. And we, for us, we get the chance for our kid, who we really <clears throat> rate, to headline on TNT, on a big show, and we're rolling the dice. If he wins, he becomes a star. Thanks for your time, guys. Appreciate it. Pleasure.